Okay. Um, hi, I'm Slava Deisling. I'm the moderator today for the Orange Hall. And we begin with our first talk, the first session with Alexander Pieper, uh, Pieper and Marika Otren from Studio Fisbin. And the first talk is Creativity Through Tinkering. Um, both of them are going to not only to talk, but show you why and how you should channel and adapt uh, tinkering and creativity beyond the digital space and adapt it to your games. Yep. So yeah, thank you Slava for this uh, nice introduction. And uh, welcome everybody. I uh, hope you're fine. And uh, yes, let's get this started. So uh, basically we are from Studio Fisbin. Hello. hello. And uh, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the studio, who we are. So, Studio Fispin is a little indie game studio based in Berlin and also in Ludwigsburg. We are between five to ten people and have, as you can see, there are two divisions. So, this is our old team. Uh, and we do mainly contract work, but also our own projects. So, um, own projects, our own company. In order to manage that, uh, we created the so-called Fizion. So this is like the mix between the FISBIN and the vision for it. So first of all, I mean, I told you about the, um, the uh, contact work we do. We don't do every job. So we select it. We look at the jobs that uh, people want to wanna do, do, make with us. Um, also, the company is uh, based a lot on trust. So basically, we pick our clients oh, a little bit. And <laughs> uh, we have a, um, like a flat hierarchy in our studio. So that, uh, I mean, although we are between eight people, no, actually, we are eight people right now, um, there's no boss and no art director and under him are the other artists or uh, something like that. So everyone in the team is really a part of FISPEN. Um, we also uh, like people, like, like everyone should do, but uh, diversity is a very uh, big topic for us. So uh, we want to embrace that. Uh, another part of the vision is uh, work-life balance. So part of our company culture is also that we uh, try uh, to avoid crunch times, for example, and we did very good at that, I guess, the last year. Um, we live and support the indie culture. I mean, we are a little indie game uh, studios ourselves, but we also love it, uh, the, all the culture around it and all the people. Um, we do as much as we can to support other uh, developers that we know. And uh, yeah, so basically an individual in, in, uh, in Fispin, so uh, someone that always keeps saying me, 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 doesn't exist. Uh, at Fispin. And yeah, that's basically our team. Uh, so uh, yeah, we, as I told you, we're eight people now. Uh, Smith is our um, concept director. Oh, thank you very much. The I, next I, one. I have a um, um, laser point. Laser ah, pointer. cool. So that's our <laughs> concept director. Then the next uh, paper is me. Uh, I'm the technical director. Motti uh, or Maraiki is the uh, art director. Um, then we have Tobias, our producer. Uh, Flo, our game designer. Luca, Luca our coder. Uh, Tim, our newest art uh, director. And Gleb, another coder. So quite a handsome team, I guess. And yes. Now I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about myself. So as I already told you, I'm the technical director at Studio Fispin. I, uh, I'm totally into game jams. And uh, actually, right now, I'm living in Berlin. And uh, stuff that I like is basically tinkering around with uh, Arduinos, these programmable microcontrollers you have, um, and uh, of course, Lego, because who does not love Lego? Um, I like Star Wars a lot also. and. Uh, Longboarding, so yeah, that's basically me. <laughs> and uh, I think Marika can speak for it herself. Yes, my name is Marika. I'm the yes. art director for many projects at Studio Fispin and one of the co-founders. I live in Hamburg, nearby, 10 minutes by bicycle. Um, I, I live in Hamburg because I became a professor this year at the HAW um, Hamburg um, uh, at the Finkenau and I'm teaching their interactive illustration and games. And uh, I like pigeons, nobody else does. <laughs> and I, of course, love tinkering as well. I love tinkering um, because I like to create characters and creature th 
creatures with a backstory and I'm also really into mixed media, so working with different materials um, and trying new objects, new stuff. Exactly. So, uh, yes, now that you've got a little overview of who we are and what we do, um, just a little rundown on what we actually did. So, uh, we've been creating games and interactive experiences uh, for like four years now and we believe it's our destiny. Uh, everything we do is of course unique and uh, with much love and passion. I guess. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm just going to talk a bit about the project. So we do, we love interactive storytelling. That's why our first um, game was uh, The Inner World, a point and click adventure game. Um, we also love serious games a lot. So games that not only are there for joy, but also can teach you something. Um, we totally are into 2D, um, mainly because 3D glasses suck. Um, we love story world, so telling stories is one of our main thing, I guess, so that's also uh, um, why <laughs> this presentation is a bit like a story in itself. Um, we love being, you know, we love getting into detail. Um, that's why maybe sometimes I talk too much, but that's also why our games are so detailed. Um, uh, we love doing games for kids. Not only, inter um, not only games uh, uh, digital-wise, but, but also working with kids together in other projects. You're going to see about it later on. And uh, yeah, so one of these things that we did is uh, the Oprah Maker. It's uh, <laughs> a sing-along app where we want to bring the format of the Oprah closer to children. So it's an app, you can get it for free in the App Store, and uh, you can create your own Opera in, uh, with your kids. Um, they can make uh, 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 photos of their faces, put it on the characters, they can record their voice, sing along. Yeah, some parents complain, others love it. <laughs> um, so this was done for a client called the IMF. Uh, then we also did uh, the Game of Peace. It's a local multiplayer table uh, series game <laughs> that is uh, situated at the museum in Münster. Has anyone been to Münster? No one. My city. It's a very nice city. Everybody and there's a, a very cool museum, and um, there is this big, big game table um, where you can uh, sit together with up to 10 people and play the negotiations for peace that took place in 1648, I guess. Um, so Germany was, a, well, basically whole Europe was a war for 30 years, and uh, in Münster and Osnabrück, two big cities in Germany, there were the negotiations for peace. And uh, the, uh, the client came up to us and was like, hey, you do games, you're kind of successful in that, we want to have a game in the museum. And that's what came out of it. And uh, yeah, our first, our debut is uh, The Inner World, uh, the classic point and click adventure hit. <laughs> no, but. Uh, um, in Germany. In Germany, a at least, bit. yeah. The, the Germans love adventures. Yeah, it's uh, the land of adventures. Um, and uh, yes, we released it two years ago. We have been working on that for three years something like that. It was a very big production, um, but uh, in the end it was totally awesome. I mean, uh, we, yeah, 2013 in the summer we released it, and since then we've been receiving a lot of love from fans, a lot of hate from people that don't like adventures and uh, asked us why the hell isn't this 3D and stuff like that, so yeah. And we get some money. And uh, Love yeah. and money. We get <laughs> love and money also. Love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, thanks for the dog. So yes, it will um, <laughs> now I've talked a lot about what we are, what we do, and uh, therefore I am now finally done talking first and will hand over to Maraiki, who's going to finally explain to you why the hell we are here and uh, what the fuss we're talking about. Yes, and because we are done giving talks and just standing here and talking, we decided to play a talk this time, and um, people will help me a little bit with that. And first of all, why are we here? In the booklet, yesterday I had a beer at the Pony Bar. I don't know who else was there, but uh, Pascal, he is not here, he promised to be here, from the Moon Eye Studios, uh, told me that we, are, we have a wrong description in our booklet. And the booklet says, I don't know if anybody of you is here because of that, that we have done uh, the World of Tanks Blitz. 
you are in the wrong room. I don't know who has <laughs> done it, but <laughs> not we. We didn't. Sorry. <laughs> so um, uh, because I had to leave early, I promised to, to, to put a tank in our slides. But, so uh, here it is. Yes. But that's not the reason why we are here. Why game makers should be tinkerers at heart. So here we go. This ah, is paper. This is actually me. Yeah. yeah, and now I start playing the presentation. Bam! So this is me. As a game developer, surprise, surprise, we develop games. This is not big news. That means we are working in a project-based environment and not in a process-based environment. Does anybody know who, what the difference is? I, I guess you know it already, but I will tell it, you, tell it again. A process is something you have done before. You can adapt and repeat. You, can, you know the problems or at least some problems you will face during the project or the process. You can improve your workflow. You can learn. You can finish the process and start over again. And um, every loop is quite the same. But uh, if you have a project, and we tend to forget about it, we are facing new challenges. Um, and that means we are facing something we have never done before, or at least some parts of it we have never done before. Um, that requires new ways of thinking, and new ways of thinking require creativity. Yay! Hooray so <laughs> for that! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> So, wait, are we talking about creativity or are we talking about tinkering? So, or is it the same? Is, it, is creativity and tinkering the same? Uh, we will figure it out. I looked it up on the internet. What means tinkering at all? Uh, I googled it for you, because the internet is always right. And uh, the internet says, Tinkering means to create and manipulate unskillfully or experimentally. And you may ask yourself, wait, unskillfully? Is this what we want to be in our daily working life? Unskillfully? Unskillfulness? Where we have to um, work under a lot of pressure. We have some clients and publishers uh, looking over our shoulders. We have deadlines, we have limits, we have uh, to deliver results, and we are used to work from um, A to B. Uh, le let me just help you a little bit with that. Over here. Okay. Paper has a really funky device. Have you yeah. spotted? And he can help me with that. That's the this thing. Yes, reaching my uh, to to continue with my slides. Thanks a lot. <laughs> You're so <laughs> we had this this morning. It was a funny morning. Come on, it's the most funny <laughs> dog I've seen in my life. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure if they like it. Do you like the dog? Come on. Um, so is. Um, <laughs> I <laughs> lost my path. Um, a process is uh, something like an assembly line and a project is a creative challenge. So in order to, pe to be creative, to um, embrace creativity, we cannot work from A to B, the direct path. So um, how can we take on a creative challenge? This is a question. <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you lost. This. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, how can we take on a creative challenge? Uh, we can play with, with it, we can uh, fool around, we can look at it in different angles, we can take it apart and put it together again, we can maybe exchange some parts and um, yeah, just fool around with it, play with it. And uh, I brought a quote for you, um, from Picasso, of course. Every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once we grow up. And I want to replace one word, um, and that is replacing artist with creative. Every child is creative. The problem is to remain creative once we grow up. And since this is not Picasso's quote anymore, I, uh, it's mine. <laughs> come on, give it up, people. <laughs> wow, come on. Oh, they are alive. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. So what is the point of um, being creative as a child? Um, get curious about everyday stuff. Um, try something new every day. Explore your environment. Um, be unskilled. Act unskillfully. Uh, don't be afraid to do something wrong. Ask questions. Find answers. Maybe find them not. Um, and get messy. Or Steve Jobs would say another quote. I like quotes. Uh, stay hungry. Stay foolish. 
So um, when I do tinkering, and I do tinkering in different ways, I will come back to that later, um, when I do tinkering with kids, I um, like to ask them for a story behind the tinkered object. So this, for example, is an um, a old water tank from a coffee machine, some glowing water, some Christmas decoration, and stuff like that. But when I do the tinkering with kids, it's, of course, not just those objects. Um, this was, for example, a, um, a really small pirate sitting on a mystic boat and sailing through the sea, find, looking for um, his, his beloved um, girl who was kidnapped by, I don't know. Uh, and we made a huge story about it, and that was really fun for the kids because they had to, they could create a scenery for it, they could um, add more details and know, knew what the whole object is about. So um, this is also the whole point of um, working on creatures or working on doing character design at an early stage, working um, with different materials. This, this for example, is Play-Doh, and we made some Play-Doh creatures with, um, yeah, with different, with different, was heißt lightened nochmal? So the energy can go to different, ah. different colors there. And so uh, we could make, uh, we were able to make cool things with that. And um, I love it a lot. The girls really loved to take Barbies apart. Uh, and they, they ripped a leg off and they smashed with a ha hammer uh, on, the, on the head of the poor Barbie girl. And it was especially the girls who made it. And I <laughs> thought it's cool to, to work with those stereoty um, stereotypes, archetypes of the female body. So, and um, I want to give credit for the tinkering um, we are doing with kids because we are doing tinkering uh, in our private environment and we are do doing tinkering at FISBIN and people will talk um, about that really soon. And we are doing the tinkering with kids. And the tinkering with kids is not our project and it's a really great project. It's made by, it's a project by the Interactive Media Foundation based in Berlin. And if you are interested in um, tinkering with kids and the whole project, how it is financed, everything like that. Um, look it up at tinkertank.de. So, tinkering and creativity. We talked about that. Is this the same? I would say tinkering is creativity exponent x, but what, what does the x mean? The x means uh, use your hands, Again, work with different materials. We are not that digital after all. Work in uh, three dimensions, work, work in the real life. Try to look at if different angles at the problem. Um, use different tools and try to play around and fool around with um, your challenges and your problems and your not problems. So start being a tinkerer at, at heart. Uh, draw if you think you cannot draw. Build even if you think it, um, that this won't work and fix something that isn't worth it. And uh, if you keep that mindset and bring that mindset, of course, there is not always place for, for tinkering at your, at your, in your working, daily working life. But if you do it in your spare time, for example, and bring that mindset into your daily working routine, you can uh, use that mindset and bring it to, to your daily working routine. And I think that helps a lot. And does it work, you may ask? Proof paper provides proof. Yeah, thanks a thanks lot. Thanks a lot. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Marika, it's best, I guess, if you come over here. Yes. And uh, I can take over the presentation yes. thingy. Let me just have a sip of water. Mm. Ah, Could you hold that, please? Yeah. Thanks a lot. So, okay, uh, as Maraki pointed out, I'm going to provide proof that all this playing and all this stuff we do uh, really... Um, uh, brings you, um, gets you to some results. So let's see how we did it. So, um, as I told you, FISPIM was founded in uh, four years ago in 2011, um, uh, mainly by Mariki, me, and Sebastian. So we had the art department, we had the technical department, and the concept department. Every one of us was an expert in his own field, but we, are also, we were total beginners and very small at uh, having a company and uh, leading a company. And uh, this unskillfulness that we had, that Maraki told uh, earlier about, uh, led to some open-mindedness. So we played around with the stuff we knew. I mean, 
we knew how to get shit done, but uh, we didn't know how to get shit done in a big team. So we played around with our project management tools. Uh, we explored tools we used to, like pen and paper or Trello, for example. I don't know if anyone knows Trello. Hands up. Yeah, cool. <laughs> so we used that. And uh, yeah, we also explored tools that we're not used to, like wall jumping. And with that, we could get over obstacles that were mainly too big for us. Um, so uh, that is one point we got through tinkering. By pr playing around with the stuff, um, we could solve a lot of problems. For example, this was the first time we designed a game that would go onto the shelves of every Saturn and Media Markt in Germany, would go to Steam and to iOS and whatnot for all the platforms. So we were a bit scared at the beginning how to do a game for a lot of people, because we were like, yeah, we like our game. We designed levels, we designed riddles, and of course you're proud of your work, but you don't know if this works. So. Um, of course, we learned game design uh, um, mechanics and stuff like that, but it all boiled down to testing. And in testing, we were like, okay, what's the best way to do it? Shall we do prototypes? Prototypes take a lot of time if you're not experienced in it. So we came back to one tool everyone knows, and it's pen and paper. And I'm not talking about the role-playing game, but I'm talking of actual pen and paper. So uh, f the first cool thing about pen and paper is it's easy. Um, it feels great. Everyone gets it. If you draw a dick on a paper, everyone laughs or does not, but you know, people get it. Um, and what we did for our uh, point and click adventure game, we drew all the scenes that are going to be in the game on a sheet of paper and all the interaction points that we had, because we knew how the story was going on, we just made these little yellow uh, post-it thingies and posted it on the, on, the, on the papers. And with that, we could go to a random person. And although it was kind of hard to explain to them, okay, imagine this is a video game, yeah, how would you solve this puzzle, blah, blah, blah. People got that. And uh, the coolest thing is, it is easy to iterate because in like five seconds, <laughs> what we had, um, that for example, in this screen, uh, and this is a very uh, high screen, and we had interaction points over there, and uh, in like five seconds, you can change the prototype because it was like, ah, we asked the guy that tested the screen, and he was like, yeah, but these points over there, they are so up in the screen that I didn't see it at first hand. And you can just take this sticky note and put it down. In, you know, in a prototype, we had to go to the coder, yeah, please put it down, then make a new build, blah, blah, blah. So that's something cool that you can uh, get along with in pen and paper. It's very easy to iterate on it. So as you can see, we did all the screens with it, but uh, yeah, sometimes pen and paper is not enough. So sometimes we come to a very cool tool, and this is basically that stuff. <laughs> uh, I don't know, who knows Baufix? Yay, applause for these two people. <laughs> it's a very old uh, Austrian toy system, and it's basically wood and plastic, and uh, you can build stuff. You have screws, you it's have... It's wood. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah it's plastic. The right. yellow thingies are plastic, right. You have screws, you have... Uh, Mutan, <laughs> these thingies that come on screws, and uh, things. It's like Lego, but more mechanical. Boys, right? things. <laughs> and um, yeah, we even use that for uh, our game design. For example, we had one um, quest in the game where you had to solve a riddle with bricks, and our game designers, um, you know, it come, came to the point where they were like, okay, if I have to draw uh, 20 bricks on the paper and all the different states the bricks can be in. This is going to drive me mad. So we said, okay, just use this stuff and build it, and then you can test it. So uh, one riddle we tested with, the, uh, with our gameplay testers. <laughs> we gave them that, and they were like, what? I, <laughs> I thought I'm coming, I'm coming here for game testing. We're like, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's really for our game. Um, and um, yeah, we could cross some borders with that as well. And if, uh, yeah, so. I can bring Biofix. <laughs> the whole, yeah, the to whole the slide. point of this slide is that <laughs> with Biofix you can cross obstacles. Woo. Yay! <laughs> so, uh, Biofix, the cool thing about it is it's 3D. It also has a great haptic because you can touch it, you can play around with it. Uh, it's very experimental. I mean, um, we built this riddle with it, but we also built uh, other stuff. This, for example, is for a very top secret uh, augmented reality app. We are right now working on it. <laughs> No, no, seriously. <laughs> oh, why the hell do people laugh? Show the dog. The, laugh, laugh about the dog. Not ab about this you can laugh. No, this, okay, get away with the dog. <laughs> so, this, yeah. 
Um, we have to train that. Okay, people, so come on. When this comes up, uh, button four. Yeah, you have to go wild. That's not go, yeah. Thank you, okay. Thanks. So, um, back to that. Uh, we built a, a, a stand for a mobile device, so you can, I'm talking too much about the top secret project, sorry. So, um, <laughs> yep. and we also like, uh, I mean, we do, we do mobile games as well, and uh, who works at a company that does, does mobile games? Okay, so you know the pain of testing, right? On, uh, I don't know, 20 devices, and with Baufix we had nice stands looking cool on our desks, and we <laughs> didn't have to uh, have all the iPads lying around. So Baufix is cool also, I think you got the point. Great. I'm trying to get out here, no, 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 stop it. Okay, I'm not reaching the button anymore. <laughs> but um, sometimes you have to get even more physical. And I mean in prototyping. Um, so sometimes a project uh, demands that the user interface is tested, for example. And then you came to the point that you see, okay, um, we have uh, uh, the game design laid out. This, for example, is a picture of the playtesting we did with the card game, the game of peace I showed you on the table. This was from the playtesting. So we had a lot of people come over, test the game design, and they were like, yeah, okay. But the crucial thing about this project was that um, we have a big table, and the table was like from here, one, two, three, four, from here, in the longitude, and like three meters wide. So a very big table. And people sitting over here had to see, yeah, and on the table there are displays, displaying the information about the game. So we had to make sure that people that sit here can read all the information that is being displayed here. So, and how you d do you test that if you don't have this big displays at your office? Get physical and do it with Baufix and paper. <laughs> so the ultimate combination is Baufix and paper together. So what we did is, um, for that um, user interface design, we actually printed the cards that are going to be displayed on the display uh, in the right size, cut them out, and we used all the Baufix stuff to have markers and display different states of the game. And here you see our, uh, <laughs> that's our game designer and our interface designer working together as a team without needs of some mock-up tools or knowing how to use some interface iOS guideline shit. No, they could just play around with the stuff on the, uh, on the ground and uh, the interface at the end worked flawlessly. So. Um, when we are working, you know, we worked close with the client on that project and we were like, hey, we want to send you some pictures of the actual interface prototype. And they were like, oh yeah, please. And we sent them <laughs> these pictures and then the client called and was like, okay, come on. You know, we pay you money. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> we're like, no, 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 this is the actual prototype. And uh, you see, if you stand over there, you can uh, uh, see everything on the other side, blah, blah, blah. And in the end, when they saw it on the actual screens, they were like, yeah, that, that totally worked. Uh, and they were like, yeah, there, there used to be a, a Baufix lying around here, but now there are digital cards, and yeah, it worked. So what I'm trying to say is that sometimes it's um, paper is not enough, and Baufix alone also, it's not enough, but try to use your surroundings and get physical with this stuff. So uh, maybe sometimes you have to play around with the dimensions to pass obstacles. Oh. <laughs> yes, and the other project we do and we love, as uh, Maragi already told you about it a bit, is uh, Tinker Tank. So there, uh, what we do is we tinker around with kids, and uh, the cool thing about that is that kids totally are, are like breathing creativity. They are the living creativity itself, and um, as working with them is a lot of fun, this leads to a lot of productivity. So. Um, yeah, as Mariki already told you, this is a project by a, a friend <coughs> company of us. It's their film tank. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, what they do there is they invite p uh, kids together for a summer camp, for example, and they encourage the destruction of old toys to build something new, like the Barbie hats you saw earlier. And uh, t in order to do that, you need to embrace chaos. And I think this is a mindset that we also need in order to come to the next... Uh, Ah, yeah, there it is. Uh, wait. You have to use the distance sensor. Yes. Yeah, here it is. Thanks. And there's a cool display for it. <laughs> uh, in order to overcome some obstacles that you got along the way while doing games. So uh, I'm going to talk to you a bit about one workshop we did. It's uh, a spaceship workshop. Um, there I had like 10 games, uh, 10 uh, kids. They were from 11 to 13 years old. 
and we had eight hours, so four hours a day. It was over a weekend. And what we did there is we designed a game and we painted the game because, of course, like Mariki also said, it's like, yeah, if you can't paint, just draw. And, you know, if you can't draw, draw it, try it out. And the kids were like, ah, oh, but I cannot paint, good. And I was like, yeah, do it. So they started experimenting with stuff. And in the end, we had like made characters that were made out of tape with uh, uh, adding eyes. And uh, they were photographed and brought into the, the game as a character. And um, we coded the games together with the kids. And uh, we, what we did there was, OK, um, I took the kids in the beginning and said, OK, um, we want to make a game. And everyone and I was like, what game do you want to make? And they were like, ah, oh, let's do Counter-Strike. And I was like, no, we're not going to do Counter-Strike in eight hours. Um, we thought a bit around a bit more. And uh, then we came up, yeah, let's do a spaceship game, because spaceships are awesome. So uh, we started playing around. And then I was like, OK, so now that we have the game design, it's a top-down space shooter thingy. What I want you to do is build the controller for that. And they were like, oh, what up? What, what? And I was like, nah, uh, because we would not only want to do the coding of the game, but we also want to um, do some physical stuff. Yeah? And, uh, what, and then what I was uh, going to do with the kids is design a controller for that spaceship game and build it, actually. And uh, who, who would have guessed? When I asked them, how should the controller look? All were like, yeah, like the Xbox controller, because it's the best one. And I was like, ah, come on. Um, think about something different. OK, we'll make the Xbox controller, make it red. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, no, uh, make it more different. Oh, what would be totally cool if we had the Xbox controller? I was like, no, stop with the Xbox controller. <laughs> um, so how do we bring this creative spark going? Um, Embrace chaos, embrace destruction. And then I was like, OK, um, I want you to think about the controller. When you think about the controller, try to make it very hard. And they were like, ah, oh, but controllers are supposed to be good to use, blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, OK, um, think about that. Uh, you will make the game, we will make the controller, but your parents have to play it. And then they were like, oh, awesome. We're going to make it as hard as it gets. So um, <laughs> that's how we, um, I could encourage them to uh, think different about the approach they had. And in the end, what came out was insane. I mean, we had a spaceship game where you, it was top down. You saw the spaceship. You could uh, give uh, a thrust, and you could turn. And on the spaceship, we had a cannon to shoot enemies. And we also had a shield that was going around. So we had three systems, movement, shooting, and shields. And uh, they built three controllers. Each controller had to be used by three people. Be <laughs> so <laughs> I mean, the obvious one is you know, controlling the spaceship. So you had a joystick for the direction and a thrust, you know, where you could give speed and take off speed. How was the thruster built? <laughs> they actually used a distance sensor like this one. But uh, only this would be, you know, too lazy and not cool enough. What they took, they, built, uh, they took an old uh, kitchen machine and mounted the machine to two, uh, uh, <laughs> two aluminium strobes this long, and you had to take this kitchen machine all the way here to give full speed and all the way back. So there was one guy holding the, the joystick, and the other one was like, OK, break. <laughs> no, no, give speed. <laughs> so and um, this was one point of chaos where People suddenly had fun with such a simple game. Then uh, the next team, and this is my favorite one. The recharging. Yeah, the recharger. <laughs> ah, OK, here you see. There's the kitchen machine, and they had to you know, pull it that way. I'm, let's see if I have a picture of the recharging one. Ah, no? OK. Anyways, um, the recharging one. So we had the laser shooting thingy, OK? And uh, they were like, yeah, it's shooting lasers, so we have a joystick. And uh, we have a big button. And I was like, yeah, OK, I have some buttons. No, 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 no. <laughs> I mean big. So what they did, they, built a, they took a wood piece of wood that was actually this size, <laughs> built a button with that. So there was one kid. The only thing he did was fire the laser like that. Boom! <laughs> and it, it, he had the most fun time ever. Uh, and of course, I was like, OK, but we need another system because you're shooting lasers. How do we recharge? And we were like, ah, oh, how can we do that? And one kid was like, OK, but it's shooting lasers, right? He was, yeah, what are lasers made up of? Light. And I was like, yeah, so what? Yeah, but we have light sensors. So this 12-year-old kid explained to me that we could recharge a laser 
by taking the, uh, taking the mobile out, activating this light thingy, pointing on a light sensor that, of course, was moving. <laughs> so the one kid shot, bam, the shooter was going, and then one other kid, okay, I have to recharge. <laughs> so, and uh, <laughs> I'm glad you like it. <laughs> so, um, the point is, um, through these... We will bring it next time. Yeah, next time I have the to bring thing. it. <laughs> so, uh, with this, uh, uh, what uh, we want to bring you to is to think about as different and as complicated as you can about projects, to bring up new ways of thinking. And uh, if you take this even further, you can go to summer camp, Maraki told you about, there are about 50 kids. There are 10 days in the middle of nowhere, and all they do is take old toys, destroy them, and build new stuff. Like in the first year, they did a whole stop motion picture with robots. They did a car race with different characters. Boats. And it's boats, and it, it's amazing. Walking um, machines. It's. Uh, ah, oh, I thought it crashed. Oh, fire. Mm. <laughs> nice. So, yeah. Um, the point of the whole talk and all my moving around and Maraki's explaining your creativity is that. You now heard a lot of tinkering around and trying to find new ways of uh, uh, get shit done. Um, what we want to encourage you to be is never be afraid. Um, try new out stuff. N don't be afraid to try the Oculus, and maybe you have to puke after using it, but it's okay. You tried it at least out. Um, hack your stuff. If you have tools you use, um, use it in any ways you can. For example, I mean, you know Baufix now already, but who would guess what this is? No one. So you know, when you're sitting 10 hours in the office and your back scratches, itches, uh, that's what <laughs> Baufix is also good for. Um, there's a new system coming out. Yes, of course we bought it. And of course we bought the Ouya. And of course we never used it. <laughs> but we tried. And um, I mean, it was a fun experience a little bit because this was the first time I, for example, as a developer, could do a game for a little console and uh, didn't have to apply for some Xbox Indie Blast stuff. So, yes. We have a fire here. We have a fire here. We uh, have a situation here. We have a <laughs> situation here, yeah. Maybe so, um, somebody here with some water because when you recharge a laser with light, yeah, maybe, maybe we you need, burn. We and need something to fix the fire. Ah. And maybe you bought <laughs> by the Ouya and it does not work. So. <laughs> How do we clean mm. that fire or Somebody make it Somebody with not a glass of water here. Oh, stand up, please. So we have a sense. People put of a course, sensor water here. Water sensor. Yes, and now. But we be have careful! It has 230 volts, right? <laughs> not entirely. <laughs> Holy shit! Ah, put yeah. it out! Put it out! <laughs> okay. So yeah, applause. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we want you to try the rainbow cake and be as creative as you can in thinking in all the ways you just can. If you have a problem with something, try to take it a different approach and try to uh, take a, um, how do you say it, a, 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 the most um, irreasonable approach you can think of and try it that way. So, thanks a lot and uh, have a last look at this talk. Uh, yeah, so if there are any questions, I think we have kind of like 10 minutes for questions. If you don't have questions, what you can do now is poke out your mobile phone no, seriously, t take out your mobile phone <laughs> and uh, join the Wi-Fi called Fispin Tinkers and go to h.com. You sh then should be able to join this game and collect coins, if it works. So, but anyways, thanks for having us. And uh, yes, follow us on Twitter. There's the handle down on there. And uh, think about some good questions. I'm going to try this as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyone? Question. Yes. Where are you guys are located? Ah, so we're located in Berlin oh. and in Ludwigsburg. It's in the south. Yeah, in next to Stuttgart. Stuttgart. So I, I'm happy to live in Berlin. Can I come over and I don't know and see what? You yeah, please come over. Uh, we are at the Waldemarstraße 37 in Kreuzberg. In uh, do you have your address on your website or? Yeah, yeah. Like yes. You will find it on the website. And where is your website? Uh, Studio yes. Yes. Studio De. Oh, someone joined. Yay! Hey. Collect the joining. coins. Collect the coins. Okay. Yeah. Hey. What's the website? 
studio minus fistbin.de. Ah, for the game, age.com, sorry. Age. Yeah, it's age.com. <laughs> oh, there are people coming. Test. Any, any questions? Anyone else? <laughs> I think uh, people are just busy playing the game right now. Yeah, <laughs> that's the Logging trick. In. That's, that's the trick. trick. I will yeah, yeah. some more coins. Coins for everyone. Hey, come on! You, if you hit the first button, we show a high score list. The first button yeah. makes coins. Number one. Ah, no, then two. Yeah, that's yeah. There it is. Ah, people. Okay, again, yeah, yeah. But I started early. But Black Zeppelin is coming over. Wish Black Zeppelin. Here, yeah, coins, coins. No, 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 no. Come on. You have to press it again. Ah, okay. All That's right. it. Alex, so Maraca, I had a question. Oh, in please. Fact. Yeah. Um, you yeah. used uh, very unconventional methods for prototyping, which I think is great. But I would like to know, while building these stuff with Baufix, with uh, pen and paper, uh, did you adapt some of these uh, things you built into your actual gameplay. For example, you did something with Baufix yeah. and said, wow, that would be cool if we integrate this thing, this uh, uh, whatever we built in the game. the game. Yeah. So basically, uh, um, maybe I wasn't clear enough, but we had this thing going on with the uh, one um, riddle where we had some, I mean, it was a brick wall and you had to pull out bricks to st uh, climb up and you had to do it in the right order. And we test, we developed that riddle with the bow fix in, uh, moving these wooden blocks around and then we were like, ah, okay, this is how it could work. Yeah. So we did that. We did a game design with bow fix and then it was in the game. No, I'm, I'm still first. Ha! Huh? <laughs> okay. No, 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 not only that, not only for game design, but for something ridiculous that isn't tailored to the game design, but you just in your spare time did something weird and thought, oh, that would be cool if just like ah. decoration for the game okay. or something like that but from, yeah. But you know, for the game. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, well, Mariki's mother um, crocheted the character of our game, so that's why, uh, <laughs> that's a funny story because they, our, the, the pigeon in the, the inner world, who has played the inner world, by the way? No one, right? <laughs> but um, uh, there's a pigeon, and people that play the inner world, good people, not you. <laughs> uh, no, no, you're, you're awesome, guys. Um, people that play the inner world love the pigeon, and uh, when Maraki's mother did the, uh, the crochet design, and we put said. it on the Facebook page, people went crazy. So uh, this crochet design actually went into the box. So when you buy the inner world, there's an instruction how to crochet yourself. So that is something that and made we, it into the game. We received a lot of self-knitted pigeons, pictures from self-knitted pigeons. Well, they, they need more coins, come on. Come on, <laughs> more coins. They are not asking questions, they need coins. So Woo! any questions? <laughs> okay. Yes, wait, one question. Why only <coughs> why only 15 children in a summer camp? Why? Because, because they love tinkering. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I, I understand why children are going there. Why so few children? Why not like because 150? Because we have uh, really diff um, dangerous tools and we need a lot of mentors to look over the children's. So we have for three, chil three kids, we have one mentor, and um, if we add more kids, this was the question, right? Yes. We need more mentors, and that it would... Okay, you have five mentors. Why so few mentors? <laughs> <laughs> because the space is limited. And we, we want to have a, like a family feeling within the camp. Ah. Uh, it's 10 days, and we want to... So what we want is that every mentor knows every kid, and the, I think... 50 is the limit, and I think it's a good number. But uh, what we could do is um, add more camps, so do it at different times. That because be it sounds super interesting, and I guess yes, that it is. many people, they would love to attend these things. And like 15 per year, right? 50. 50. Okay, 50. even 50, 50 in one year is too... too yeah, it's okay. one, one yeah. summer camp. But uh, it's the project started, uh, I don't know, three years ago, and I think if they are receiving a lot of yeah, um, feedback and questions, they could add another one. And maybe they are coming to the play, uh, by the way, the uh, makers of the Tinker Tank. So if you want to meet them, um, I qu can contact you with uh, the Interactive Media Foundation. No, I just look like a parent. I, yes. I'm interested in this thing. Yes, yeah. 
as a parent, you can ask questions too. All right. Okay, I guess uh, we have... Uh, you have uh, yeah. five minutes. Five minutes. So if there aren't any questions, I guess you just can play the game. <laughs> and so who's I Empire? Hands up, who's Empire? Yeah, so you're really good. You're leading with 676 points. Okay. So Woo! Good yeah. stuff for Empire! <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay, we can keep on playing five minutes. Come on. So <laughs> let's see. Jill is not moving at all. What's up, Jill? Who's Jill? No one is Jill. Ah, Jill here. Left. Why are you not moving? Doesn't that not work? It c can be that it does not work. That's also something that happens with tinkering. Stuff works or it does not. But so it's before, uh, one thing, before yeah. you guys leave, I'd like to, uh, you guys, that you fill out the feedback cards so we can have a nice overview of how you like the feedback of the talk. Yeah, thanks. I like the talk very much. Yeah, that's, me that's too. What you're we know right. where yeah. you live. <laughs> yeah. And we have, we are Because crazy. everyone that joined the game via his handy now has left his address, so. <laughs> 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 We're gonna come by. <laughs> okay, last update. People are leaving. Uh, we are doing the Press festival. two again. And throw the people away to the, yes, thanks. <laughs> oh, still Empire. You're very good. Okay, so thanks for having us. Have a good, nice time. See you around. Bye-bye.